Hey folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. Welcome to another weekly study. Today, we are going to go into chapter seven. Now remember, this is the sixth edition. Uh, just keep in mind at this point, whenever we talk about material in the ACE textbook, it's always the sixth edition now. Uh, ACE has completely eliminated anything from the fifth edition and prior to that. So just keep in mind, you'll notice, and, and I've had some folks ask me, this was one of their original. See how I got the um, I got this binder for their sixth edition. So some folks have asked me, why do you have a binder on yours? Um, generally, now they're making they're making their textbooks once again with the normal uh, with the normal binder. But I got one of the original uh, new sixth editions, and so that's why I got the binder. And so you don't have to ask that question again. We are in chapter seven, and we're going to talk about body composition. And we bring this up because we do we do get questions quite often on um, body composition. In other words, body fat caliper testing versus, you know, skin fold versus the other methods of testing. And ACE has given you some information and, and a, a table basically on the different types of body comp testing. In other words, body fat, how do I measure body fat? And there are a couple of ways to do it. And I think it was um, Arun, hope I pronounced that correct. Arun, one of the students in our Facebook group had asked a question and he, you know, he posted, the, posted a picture of uh, the table 7-3 body comp assessments. And he asked a really good question, you know, how much do I need to know? So it's important that we, that we kind of understand certain things about body composition and assessment methodology. And that's one thing. And that's why when we, when we do the studies like this, it also gives an opportunity to help you as an aspiring personal trainer trying to pass your ACE exam to understand some other really important stuff about the very materials. And so there's always uh, two, you know, two sides to the coin. I want you to pass the test. At Body Design University, we want you to pass the test, which means for the most part, you got to memorize information. And how do you memorize information? This chart, like any other chart in this book, requires that you read it, rewrite it, use colored markers, do, do whatever works for you to memorize the information. Again, I, I like using colored markers and drawing things because they it tends to stick in, stick in my brain. Um, not everybody, you know, it doesn't work for everybody like that. Some folks are better when they simply uh, rewrite it. But it's, it, remember, it's the physicality of using your hands to rewrite the material. It slows you down and forces you to think about the material. And if you do it over and over, it's just, look, we've got historical data on this. We know that people that do this over and over, it just gets, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a bat over and over you can't forget it people tell us they have nightmares about it they can't they can't not re, not forget the material they do it over and over of course i'm being facetious it's good when that happens especially when it's material like we're talking about here so on the one hand we want you to pass the test which means do you have to memorize this entire table no if you go through our general study guide we talk about that that in every one of these chapters, there are priority type of chapters um, based on the domain percentage of questions. And we, we have this, we have this um, constant dialogue back and forth, which is, well, is chapter seven really that important? Is this really that important? And, and I know where that is coming from. That's coming from a state of fear and frustration. I've only got three weeks to do my test. I've only got a month or whatever the case is. Do I have to really know this? Can I move on? And, and the answer is, well, yeah, depending on how much time you have, you're, you're going to need to focus on specific chapters over other chapters and then within specific chapters that are higher priority, which means that there's a higher level of representation of material on the exam, right? Then you do need to spend more time. And then when you get into a chapter like chapter seven, which is a fairly important chapter, on the ACE exam, why? Because it's assessments. And so anytime you're, you're dealing with assessments, and of course chapter seven is resting assessments and what are known as anthro 
Psychometric measurements. Yeah, chapter seven is critically important. And then as you come into chapter seven, there are certain areas that are more important than others. But I, I hate to parse, parse it out like that. But we can do that here with this material. And when we're talking about, I'm just going to go ahead and get my screen sharing up for you. When, it, when we're talking about the body composition assessments, um, it's within the expand your knowledge uh, box right here on page 228. So if you've got your, your book in front of you, remember, even as you're going through this video, it's a good idea to have a notepad, pencil, and, and have your textbook in front of you, writing your text, whatever the case is. Uh, go to page 228, and that's where you're going to find the table 7-3, which is this guy right here. Uh, this is the first. This is the first of the two. So here's that, and there. That's the second one, okay? So this is going to be on page 228. The second slide there is going to be the continuation of table 7-3 on 229. And this is what I want to help you with. Um, a table like this, anytime you see these tables that have a, um, what I guess you could say, a lot of writing, look at all the writing on here. It's a lot of writing. It's like a paragraph. They're literally writing a paragraph. Um, anytime that happens, it's, it's generally a good idea to flag this and kind of keep in mind, you don't need to memorize the entire paragraph. So let's look at it in two ways. Number one, body composition is really uh, critical in the real world, just so you know this. In the real world, this as a personal trainer, this is one of the most important things you ever do. Irrespective of anything else, it, it's really simple. I mean, at Body Design University, this is what we do. As a personal trainer for 30 years, this is what I did. Body weight, body, and body fat. That taught me what their comp, body comp is. Now I know how much fat they got to lose. I don't know how much lean muscle they have. Exercise and nutrition makes modifications to those two variables. That's really it. Now, I will do circumference measurements, but not every client wants to do circumference measurements. And, and ACE actually correctly states, not everybody wants to do body fat. Now, I never gave my clients a choice. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're paying me money and I'm trying to get your results, oh, I'm going to get your body fat. Now, if you're obese, you're technically obese, a BMI of 30 or higher, and I can't get a, a skin fold, I'm going to use a bioelectrical impedance device. Are they as accurate? No. And by the way, they, they tell you that. They're not as accurate, okay? Less sophisticated, sometimes found in fitness settings. However... Um, they are easy to use, but look at right here, their accuracy, accuracy, okay, is um, probably the least accurate of all the, of all, the, unless you're, by the way, unless you're using a, um, like a real high quality, like the in body. So that's a, that's a um, one where you step on it. So it's got the, the foot electrodes and the hand electrodes, that one is pretty, that one's pretty good. But they, but the standard handheld ones, and I'm just telling you, this is, this is the real world. I would only use the handheld one because it was easy, simple, and, and I couldn't get skin folds on people. And if I can't get a skin fold, I've got to do something else. Um, that's kind of the point. So in the real world, body comp is critical. Passing your exam, passing the ACE exam, you need to know that this is one, you have bioelectrical impedance devices. And what's the critical thing to remember about bioelectrical impedance? Okay, most important thing as you're reading through this is optimal hydration, okay? And validity of the prediction algorithms simply means that they are relatively, relatively, especially just the handheld ones are, are some of the least accurate. Okay, that's the thing about bioelectrical impedance. Easy to use, not very accurate. Okay, doesn't mean they're not accurate. If you have everything on point, hydration is good, and you're using the uh, a very expensive, um, you know, high level bioelectrical impedance device that uses the feet and the hands, they can be they can be uh, pretty pretty accurate. Okay, so the point is is that that's number one. And what I would do is I would. Watch what I do. 
you can see me in a little box, number one, bioelectrical impedance device. And I would write relatively of all these options, relatively inaccurate, not as accurate, but really easy to use. And you know, that's why I would do that. Now, second on the list, on this list is air displacement, okay? Or the ADP, um, plethysmography. So pronounce that any way you want, okay? The bod pod, okay? This is way too expensive, okay? So I don't, I don't know anybody I know anybody in the fitness setting that um, that uses that, but it can be pretty accurate. Okay, so air displacement, it's marketed for the fitness setting, but it is what? Cost prohibited. So I write this down. Air displacement, plasmography, and the bod pod. Boom. And I write relatively accurate, too expensive. Right? It's too expensive. It's an egg-shaped chamber. Now, you'll notice again, this entire column, in one sense, is not the highest priority for memorizing. And don't memorize a paragraph anyway. Just know that in this case, what I'm showing you is what you need to know, okay? These guys right here on this column. Um, the DEXA scan, the DXA, dual energy, X-ray absorptiometry. So a DEXA scan is a piece of equipment that is normally reserved for bone density testing for, for women. Okay. So, you know, the average female client over the age of 40 or 50, whatever the case is, they'll get a DEXA scan done on a regular, you know, every year or every couple of years to check their bone density. Obviously, a machine that can check bone density can obviously check the density of pretty much any body tissue, which is why now, now, although it's found in clinical settings, guess what? It has the ability to identify regional body fat and is a whole body scanning system, okay? Reads bone and soft tissue mass. Believe it or not, today, DEXA scanning is probably, um, when done properly and the person is in the right physiological condition, hydration-wise, DEXA scanning could be probably the most accurate way to get a body fat, body composition. Um, and that's what we're seeing now is more and more um, higher level, higher level data collection or more exacting data collection on body composition being done using the DEXA scan. Okay. Once again, nobody in the fitness industry is used. You're not going to find them in health clubs. That's just the reality of it. So what do you write? DEXA. Now, I always write D-E-X-A just because I want to remember the word, but it's D-X-A, DEXA scan, um, too expensive, research, found in hospital, you know, research, hospitals, things like that. It's not generally used in the fitness industry. Obviously, you need a, you need a technician. It's clinical stuff. So you're not going to have your clients using it. There you go. That's about all you need to know on the on the DEXA scan. And again, I just grabbed the uh, table seven, three continued. And um, so now you're here with hydrostatic weighing, which is what we call the gold standard. So what do you do? You write this down. This is the, this is the submerging uh, water submersion testing. We call it the gold standard. Why? Uh, because most uh, prediction, prediction uh, testing, like with the algorithms developed for um, for skinfold calipers, the algorithms that are developed for uh, bioelectrical impedance devices, are essentially based off of uh, data that has come from and continues to be gathered from hydrostatic weighing, underwater weighing. So you can see what's the critical thing to know about hydrostatic weighing, it's the gold standard, blah, 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 based on calculations derived from this, may be found in exercise physiology. Look, nobody's doing this in a fitness facility, unless you have somebody that literally comes in and brings all the equipment and maybe does it once a month. Um, you can actually hire, there are, there are companies that have uh, dunk tanks in trucks and they'll drive in with their dunk tank and their truck, they'll park it, get everything set up and then you can have your clients walk up in there and they can get there, but it's very expensive. 
Okay, very expensive. So uh, you can read through this and it basically explains, uh, explains what it is. But the fact of the matter is nobody's using it. It's too expensive, just like all the other ones. And it's uh, basically out of the reach of the average fitness professional because you're not, you're not going to a college or a university to get it done. And, and don't get me wrong, if you have 100 clients and you have a, a thriving personal training business, then sure, hire, hire one of these companies to drive their truck in with a, with a dunk tank and do it on a Saturday and you're going to spend, uh, you're going to spend a couple of thousand easy, easy to get however many folks tested. Not a bad idea. Um, the question is, why do that when you have other, you know, more accessible, relatively accurate measures? Um, MRI, of course, uh, found in hospitals, diagnostic centers. Nobody's going to do that. That's out of reach. It's too much money. What do you, again, this is clinical. This is folks, the DEXA scan and MRI, you know what these are, right? These are found in hospitals and diagnostic centers. I'm, I'm not going to have my client go, yeah, go ahead and go get an MRI. No. Look, you go to you go and try and get an MRI at a diagnostic center and just tell them, I just want my body fat measure. They're going to laugh at you. So that's just not one. It could be used. It could be used. Um, they're located in clinical settings. Uh, so there you go. It's out of it's out of the normal purview of a fitness trainer, money, too much money, and accessibility. It's probably a better word to use. They're just not accessible to you. I mean, unless you know somebody, I guess you can get it done. Um, now you could do a, uh, what's known as an NRI near in, uh, infrared interactance um, device. The Futrex is an example of that found in fitness settings. Um, honestly, I never used it. I don't know people that use it. Um, again, you can, you can understand folks why we just don't use Although they are, they are things that can be used for the most part, as a trainer, you're simply not going to use these things. They take too much time. They're too expensive. What are you, are you going to buy a Futrex? Go, go check it out on Google. Um, calculations are plugged in, blah, blah, blah. Method is relatively inexpensive. It's fast, but generally what? Not as accurate. Boom. So there's your, you would write NRI near infrared interactance, and you'd write that down. Now, put that along with your bioelectrical impedance from an accuracy standpoint. It's just not something that I would spend any time or money on. Um, although again, as you can see, it's relatively, relatively easy to use. Um, and here it is. Here is the, the um, method of choice, uh, which is the skinfold caliper measurements, very commonly used. Uh, skin fold used to pinch a fold skin, blah, blah. So cost-wise, it doesn't cost a whole lot of money. You just buy one. Look, the best skin fold calipers on the market, 150 bucks, maybe, maybe 175, right? Lange makes a great skin fold caliper. You don't even need that high of a quality. I'd just much rather use them. A lot easier to use, very accurate. And then um, as long as you, as the technician, are good at it, it's pretty accurate. And by the way, if, if you're the technician and you do it on the same sites all the time, same squeeze tension, all this other stuff, from one measurement to the next, you can be very, very close to, um, to underwater or hydrostatic weighing levels of accuracy. Okay, so that's our, there it is. I'm gonna give you a couple of more check marks. There's our there's our deal right there. That's generally what we use. So you write that down, skin fold, easy, relatively easy to use, relatively accurate, simple, cost-effective, and you can knock it out in a couple of minutes to get, a, to get your measurements. You can do multiple skin. You can do a three skin fold. You can do a five. You can do a seven. Um, any number of ways that you can use it. Uh, finally is the total body, Conductivity, electromagnetic. Okay, you you already lost me. Did you just say electromagnetic force field to assess? Come on, it's impractical. Ain't nobody using it. Too expensive. Yada yada. Let me draw an upside down. Bleh. Ain't nobody using uh, Tobec, right? Total body 
electrical conductivity. I'm not saying any of these are wrong. Look, if I had one and I had a technician, oh, heck yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use those. I would much, look, I would love to use a DEXA scan, but it's just impractical, okay? So again, the point here, the point here is um, two things. In order, to, in order to pass the exam, and you will see maybe one question, sometimes you may see two. You're not going to see 10 questions on, on body comp. No. Now, you may see questions related to assessments and the use of body composition testing as one of, right, as one of the what? Resting assessments. Okay, because once you move to um, other chapters, you're going to see the other type of assessments. And so the resting assessments are going to involve anthropometric measurements, right? You're going to do uh, blood pressure, whatever the case is. Keep in mind, ACE also wants to make sure you understand, just sort of as, as an aside to this, that you're not doing all of these all the time with every client. Why? Because the goal is not to get measurements and data from people, right? That's not, and they, they're telling you that from the beginning. There are, you know, there are, there are ways to um, kind of help people through this process of getting them exercising without creating what are known as barriers, barriers to change or barriers to doing the exercise, right? So these barriers that are in place could simply be, oh, by the way, yeah, I do body fat testing. And the client goes, oh, geez, I don't want to get my, um, uh, yeah, I don't want to train or, I, you know, I decided not to, right? So the, the, we want to overcome those barriers. And sometimes the way to do that is to not do it. Okay. That's the way ACE, that's the way ACE tries to help you to understand um, navigating through the assessment process. Now, specifically with this information, remember those columns, this is one of the reasons why it looks daunting. You're going, oh man, do I have to, do I have to memorize both columns? The answer is no, no. Look at each one of these, write them down and just make sure you notate what I showed you on those slides. What's the important thing to remember about each one of these, okay? You don't have to worry about the actual methodology that's used. Um, they're just giving, giving that to you as points of interest. Um, and then there you go. That's all you really would need to know on pages 228 229. I hope as always, the information that I've given you here is helpful on two fronts. First is that it helps you to not only pass the exam and deal with questions that are related to this material, but helps you to think through how to study the entire textbook if you're getting through the entire textbook, right? So that's that first part of it. The other is that remember, you're not just taking the ACE exam, trying to pass it, so that you can go, yay, and then put something up on your wall and then go back and do whatever you were doing before you took this. Now, some of you, that might be the case, but generally the reason you're doing this is because you're, you're becoming a trainer or you are already a personal trainer and you're trying to get certified. And that's the case, that's great. So navigating those two, those two sides of the coin um, is really, really important. This is one of those areas that I'm just going to tell you, in my opinion, it's critical. You're going to focus over on skinfold unless your unless your facility that you're at, if you're at a big box gym, or your personal little boutique training business has a bioelectrical impedance device like the Embody that uses the feet and the hands. Fantastic! You don't need to use skin caliper unless it breaks, unless you lose electricity, right? Then you definitely want to have a skin caliper on hand. Um, as always, our goal here at Bodies on University is to help you pass your ACE exam on the first attempt. Um, if you've already taken it and you, and you did not pass, that's okay. Remember, you know all the material up to that, up to that point that you got. And now it's time to kind of study again and spend time on those domains that you didn't do well on so you can pass on the second or whatever attempt you're on, that's why we're here to help you. If you have comments on this particular uh, study this week, please leave them below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We've got content coming out all the time. Um, and of course you can hit the bell and you'll get a uh, notification for when the content comes out. We do this every week. Every week we put something out there and it's you that actually helps us to decide what it is we're going to we're going to study 
that particular week, just let us know how we can help and assist um, and have a great weekend. We will see you next week. Bye.